Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Kuru Minia in the five-minute pool on ICC. I almost said 15-minute pool, but this is definitely a five-minute game. And good for me, because this player is 2552. They would be tough to face in standard. <laughs> so this is a Grandmaster that I'm not aware of. Gil Popilski. Okay. From Canada, or maybe Israel? I don't know why those two countries stick in my head, but I'm certain I've seen them at tournaments before and on the list for tournaments. Okay, so we're playing a mainline Slav. Bishop takes c4, bishop b4. Let's see if we can keep our rating above 2400. I think that would be nice. A good goal, at least. Okay, knight h4. I can keep the bishop here, or I can move it to g4. I think I'm going to keep it on f5, and just let white take it if he wants. So I'm surrendering the bishop here and also fracturing my pawn structure, but this is generally okay for black to do. You do get some enhanced control over e4, and you get the e-file to work with. So, all right, let's defend this pawn. That said, I haven't played this particular position that often, so I'm going to be winging it a bit. But structurally, I think this is sound. All right, so maybe rook f8 to start. I don't think white's threatening much. Maybe a5. a5 looks like a better idea. Let's stop white from playing a5 just in case they get that idea in their head. Okay, h3, let's play rook f8. It looks like one of these positions where white's just, just going to try to nurse the position with their two bishops, or they're going to offer to trade the bishops right away. Hmm, yeah, let's take them up on that trade. Knight b6, attack the bishop, maybe try to utilize the d5 square. Yeah, let's get in here. On the whole, I don't think I have much to complain about so far. This looks fine. Uh, possibly knight e4 on the last move would have been interesting, with knight takes f2 ideas hanging in the air. Maybe I'll still look for that. Queen c4. Hmm. Well, knight e4 with tempo suggests itself. Let's do that. It's blitz. You kind of got to go with your first instincts oftentimes. So if rook d1, I wonder if knight takes f2 is working. I mean, at the very least, knight takes f2, king takes f2, knight takes e3, forking the queen and the rook. There's also queen takes e3 check, but they have king f1 in that case. Although I feel even there, there's some pretty nice opportunities. Okay, well, let's take first and ask questions later. So if king takes, queen takes e3 check, probably king f1, and then I can move my queen away somewhere, like queen g5, threatening knight e3 check. Yeah, and like I said, there's also knight takes e3 straight away, but somehow, if knight takes e3, queen d3, that looks a lot safer for white. Can win d1, but they're going to keep e2 defended. So let's do this first. Check. And then after they play king f1, I'm thinking this queen g5 move. Okay, just looking to see if there's anything else. Knight f4, queen takes f7, nah. So yeah, let's do this. Ah, but he can go king to g1. Well, at any rate, I can repeat if that happens. King g1, queen e3, check. Hmm. If king g1, knight e3, that would be a different story. Okay, so here, can I play rook takes e2, king takes, queen takes g2, check. His king is on the run. Boy, that looks good. I think that's working. Rook takes e2, king takes e2, queen takes g2, check. If king d1, I can always check and go after that rook in the corner. So yeah, let's do this. He's got to take. Check. If king e1, we have rook e8, so I think this move is practically forced. King d1. Yeah, and now just check, perhaps, and go after that rook. That looks like the simplest way to play it. Check. Let's do that. I'm not going to mess around with something like rook e8. This looks quite good on its own. Oh, 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 oh. That's, oh, okay, that doesn't work, though. We can do this. I thought for a second he had rook d1 trapping my queen, but I have knight e3 in reply. <laughs> That's quite important. Uh, in fact, we can just do this straight away. Check. Yeah, and then knight e3 check on the next move. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get the win. 
against Kuru Mania. I mean, I could have played knight e3 uh, instead of queen takes d1, but this is just so clear cut. Let's keep it simple. Yeah, and he resigns. All right, so it appears that the tactics worked out in my favor in that one. Let's go back and take a look. So this is a Slav with d takes c4. That move characterizes the Slav compared to, for instance, the semi-Slav, which is e6. And white plays a4 in order to stop black from playing b5. So if white were to play e3 directly, then black could play b5 and support the pawn. So a4 is needed to ensure that black does not advance and defend that pawn on c4. So bishop f5. And this is the point. Black is not going to play to try to hold on to the c4 pawn. They're willing to give the c pawn back, but they're going to use that time to complete their development smoothly. And bishop f5 followed by e6 is a good way to do that. Yeah, so another move here is knight e5, looking to recapture the pawn with the knight. But e3 is the traditional line where white just prepares bishop takes c4. Now, bishop b4 is a good idea because white has already played a4. This is the main line for black. If that pawn were back on a2, bishop b4 would be a lot less attractive because white could harass it with a3. But as it stands now, bishop b4 is a nice move to achieve because you pin the knight and white cannot chase you with their a pawn. So castles, castles, and then knight h4. More often I see people play queen, playing queen e2, trying to advance e4. There's quite a bit of theory behind queen e2 and also the move that white played, knight h4. So I just played knight bd7, ignoring the, the threat of knight takes f5. You can also play bishop to g4 and harass the white queen if you like. But I think this structure is fine for black, so I just went for it. So queen c2 attacking f5. I play g6 defending, rook d1, queen e7. Maybe I should play a5 directly, but I did want to get my queen off the d-file, just in case white gets ideas of playing d5 and trying to open up a lane towards that queen. Maybe white should play a5 here, because I think it's desirable for white to get a5 in if they can. I have not played the stabilizing move pawn to a5 myself, so white may like to do this, threatening to go a6, and... In some cases, white can utilize the a4 square, either with their rook or maybe even their knight. So let's add the engine right here and just see. Yeah, the computer agrees white should play a5, and it gives a tiny, tiny edge to white. On the previous move, it doesn't like queen e7 as much. It says knight b6 is better, chasing the bishop, and then a5. Yeah, quite possibly I should play this move myself. I wonder if it's even playable just right here, but... I was a little concerned about d5. Maybe d5 just doesn't achieve much for white. The computer says I don't have much to be concerned about. But yeah, I think it's safe to say, given the move order, white should play a5 himself. Bishop d2 doesn't help their cause much. So here I played a5, stopping white. h3, I just played rook f8. Yeah, I think black is doing well here. I traded the bishops. Now, when they took with the rook, uh, I should probably look at knight e4 directly, followed by knight takes f2, but it's not really going to work. Like, say, knight e4, rook here, take. This is a inferior Check. version of what I had in the game because my other knight is not participating yet. If my knight was already on f6 and maybe I could play knight e4 here, that's a different story entirely because then I'd be threatening queen f2 mate. But as it stands, I think I'm a little bit slow. Like, yeah, if I play knight f6, rook a3 is a nice defensive resource using the rook laterally to kick my queen out. So I played knight b6, just angling for squares with this piece, attacking the bishop. d5 is a great outpost square. d5 and e4. Well, these, these pair of knights. So knight bd5. Yeah, I think white already has to think about ways to kill my activity, because it seemed like they were kind of oblivious to the, the possibilities of sacrifices on f2 or e3. Queen c4 looks highly suspicious. I don't really understand the point of that move, to be honest, because leading with the queen against the knight on d5 is not going to lead to anything. Surely they realize that. So the only thing I can think of is maybe they're vacating the c2 square, but putting a rook there doesn't look attractive. I could always chase it with knight b4. So I question the motivation behind queen c4. It looks like a, a faulty move.
Yep, and now I get knight e4 in, and this is already shaping up excellent for black. So hitting the rook, hitting f2. Yeah, and probably they should play rook d3 so as to discourage this move, because now, after the sacrifice on f2, I can't take with the queen, so I would have to play knight takes e3 if I want to keep this going. But yeah, queen takes okay. f7 is a good counter stroke to that. And then after the trade, check. white can take on e3, and white will be up a piece for just a pawn. So not good for black. Yeah, I think if they had realized that knight takes f2 was hanging over their head, they would have played rook d3. And after rook d3, the engine says knight b4 is good, chasing the rook further. Ah, and actually I can do the same thing. So kick the rook back. Note that d1 is the only safe square for this rook, because we have c3 and d2 covered. So rook d d1, take, king takes, queen Check. takes, king f1. This isn't quite as good as the game, because I feel like my knight on b4 is worse off than it is here. But the engine still thinks black has great compensation, even if I have to take a timeout to play rook e6 and stop queen takes f7. Hmm, that's interesting. Still gives a clear edge to black. Maybe my idea is just to, to triple up on the e-file and attack e2. And black does have two pawns for the piece, and it doesn't look easy for white to defend. Okay. Well, white played this, and... I mean, if there's ever a chance to play knight takes f2, it's right here. I'm not going to get much better off than I have, uh, or my forces are not going to be much better off than they are here. Both knights pointed at key squares, and the queen and the rook backing up on the e-file. So knight takes f2. I mean, he pretty much has to take it, even though Check. it leads to the weakening of his king. Otherwise, he just lost a, a very key pawn. If king e1, I'm trying to think how I would play this. I don't want to look at the engine quite yet. I think queen check here should be good using the check. pin. And if king f1, there's knight e3 check, which will be mate next move. Check. Check queen mate. Queen takes g2 mate. Therefore, white would have to play king d2. And I suspect there is something strong here, even if it's simply check. like check. He can't go to c2 for fear of the fork, so probably king back to e1, and maybe just queen takes g2. Again, it's an ongoing initiative. This just looks awful for white. Yeah, minus 9 in black's favor. Okay, the engine backs that line up. Queen Check. g3, king d2, queen g5, Check. keeping white's king in the danger zone. King e1, take the pawn. King d2 again. Go back, Check. queen g5. <laughs> Here, f4, threatening f3. Yeah, black just has everything. And black's not even down any material now. I have three pawns for the piece. So he played king f1 instead. Yeah, and, and as I was saying, it's important that I can take with the queen, because I think knight takes is significantly weaker. It might allow queen d3. And I was just yeah. looking at this position, and I thought that although black has a rook plus, what, two pawns? For the two minor pieces, this would coordinate white's pieces, and their king isn't feeling as naked as it, as it was in the game. Maybe I have something stronger like Check. queen h4, but in general, I think taking with the queen is better. Check. And having the knight make a later appearance on e3. Okay, so here I played queen to g5. The engine was liking queen e7 initially, but I like queen g5. Keeping the queen active and pointed at the g2 pawn. And now knight e3 is a, a royal fork threat. So what if he plays king g1 here? That was a move I was wondering about. The engine says I might have to take a chance, or take a timeout, to play rook e7, defending f7, and thereby preparing knight e3. I mean, one nice thing when you're calculating is when you know that you can repeat the position if you like. So I saw that if king g1, at the very check. least I could play queen e3 check, forking the king and the knight. And to avoid losing the piece, white would have to come to king, king back to f1. So that's kind of nice. But certainly I would have looked for more in this position after queen g5, king g1. I mean, I would have looked at knight e3, queen takes check. f7, king h8 as well. Because even though we lost that pawn with check, white has no follow-up checks. And we're threatening mate, and we're also threatening the rook. So that looks pretty good too. But yeah, maybe even the quiet move, rook e7, is strongest. Preparing the doubling of rooks. Defending f7 and threatening knight e3. 
It looks pretty convincing. As played, though, he played rook d3, and yeah, rook takes e2 just appears to be working. With rook d3, he cut the defense of e2 from the white queen. So now we make this sacrifice, and the king is drawn out. Check. Queen takes g2, check. He's only got two moves, king e1 or king d1. King e1 just allows rook e8, check. check. So that's no good. So he has to go to d1, and yeah, check. just gave a check and went after that rook in the corner. I had a slight moment of panic because, honestly, I didn't see rook d1 when I was calculating this line. But fortunately, I just check. have either queen takes d1 or knight e3 check right away. So <laughs> it's not going to matter. I mean, clearly white should not play rook d1 here, but they're just down three pawns. Their king is open, and they have nothing to attack with my knight on d5 blocking the queen. So it's, it's completely lost for white. Check. But nice tidy way to end the game. And he resigned in view of 93 check. Okay, so a successful Slav game. Not often you get to go on the attack in the Slav, but when I had those outposted knights, there were just too many tantalizing tactical options. Predominantly that sacrifice on F2. So something to watch if you play this line for white. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.